Welcome back to the channel, guys. On this week's episode, we're gonna talk about this little motor right here in front of us. So this is the GM Atlas 4200 that we are swapping into our 2000 Ford Mustang with our five-speed transmission. When I debuted this project, um, I had a lot of questions about this motor itself and just various odds and ends and pieces about what is this motor, what are you gonna do with it, what are the specs, just all kinds of questions, both on my social media and just personal conversations I've had and on the YouTube. So I thought, hey, let's go ahead and just talk about what this motor is, do a little whiteboard, a little educational video, if you will. You must teach me. And then also talk about a little bit of the differences uh, within the motor series itself. So again, this is the GM Atlas series. This is the six cylinder variant in front of you. They also did, along with the same family, produce a four cylinder and a five cylinder version. Um, these were commonly found in the Colorado and Canyons. Uh, I'm not gonna talk too much about those, but long short of it, uh, if you just take one cylinder or two cylinders away, you pretty much have the same motor. So the Atlas series 4200 can really be broken down into two generations, Gen 1 and 2. Gen 1 consisting from 2002 to 2005 and Gen 2, 06 to 09. What did these come in? Well, they came in the Trailblazer, the Envoy, the Rainier, the Bravada, the 97X, and the Ascender. Now, they didn't always have them from 02 to 09 in every single one of those vehicles. But as you can tell, when we're talking about six different vehicles that GM was making and producing, there are a lot of these out in the junkyard. So at the moment, they're still easy to find and they're quite abundant, so that means they're pretty cheap. You can probably go to your local yard and pick one of these up for 150, 200 bucks. That's kind of the appeal, right? Um, the appeal to this is it's cheap as far as getting the motor. I bought a Mustang, which has lots of parts availability, but at the moment, you're still kind of doing a lot of DIY when it comes to the mounts and a few other aspects that I'll talk about here. So back to the Gen 1 and Gen 2, this is a 2003 motor you see in front of you, so it is a Gen 1 motor. One of the obvious ways to tell between a Gen 1 and Gen 2 starts right here with the valve cover. This one here being a Gen 1 has a plastic valve cover. When they moved to the 06 motors, they went to an aluminum valve cover. Now, the nice thing about the aluminum is, of course, you can weld it. So if you wanted to add any bungs when going to the turbo, additionally, one of the highest points on this motor is this oil fill cap, and a lot of folks will shave those. Um, actually, Atlas Industries is now offering a service to, you can purchase a valve cover with it already shaved. They'll typically move it over here or somewhere else, and they'll also take a little bit of this height off the front, because when you have a, these new generation cars, you know, you're losing a lot of that hood uh, area, or height, if you will, to make this thing fit. Uh, this motor, if I'm not mistaken, is about 32 inches or so front to back, and I wanna say from the bottom of the block deck to the top of here is about 22 inches, not including the oil pan. Now, the 4200, unlike the four cylinder and five cylinder, only came with a front sump oil pan. As you can see here um, in the all wheel drive, we've got a uh, half shaft that rolls through the front of that oil pan. So um, you might know a bit about this motor just from that silly oil pan. Back to our topic here though, like I said, the second gen has the uh, aluminum valve cover, which is really nice uh, when you want to weld on it. The other second very quick indication are the coils that you see on the top. I've noted here that a gen one has the heat sink, which is very similar to what you would see on the truck coils for the LS motors. I ran them for quite a while on the 240. The second generation actually changed coils completely different and there are no longer heat sinks. Now, based on the LS knowledge, I would have thought that the Gen 1 was actually the coil that I would have wanted. But in fact, when you start pushing uh, boost down these motors, those coils don't really do the job and you wanna make your way over to the second generation coil. Next, there is a bit of a difference when it comes to the ECUs and how this motor is ran. Now, I wanna back up and say that in Gen 2, there was actually a mid-gen change. So from 08 to 09, it actually uses a completely different computer and a different way to pick up its cam and crank signal. Gen 1 uses a P10 computer, which I have sitting over there on the shelf. 06 to 07 uses a P12. 
and an 08 to 09 uses an E67, which is actually used on some LS applications. Um, I believe maybe the GTO and later, but don't quote me on that. Now, one of the biggest differences between a Gen 1 and Gen 2 internally is the crankshaft. This motor here being the 03 Gen 1 has a 12 counterweight crankshaft. So full counterweight across the entire crankshaft, which is forged. In Gen 2, GM decided to possibly save a little bit of money and went down to a eight counterweight crank. Now, it's been proven that you can make power on both these motors, but when you do have a straight six, you've got a lot of stuff going on there. The extra counterweight would be nice to help get rid of that noodling of the crankshaft. <laughs> so with that said, why would you pick a Gen 2 if the Gen 1 is better? Well, in 06, GM made yet another change and decided to change up a few things in the cylinder head. Gen 1 has smaller exhaust ports and valves, and Gen 2 has larger exhaust ports and valves. Can't really see that here, but I'll put a picture up from uh, the wiki. You can see the differences in the valves here. So with that said, they did change the cams, the valves, the head itself is actually different with the ports, and then the exhaust manifold is different as well. The ports are much larger, which you can see here as well. My plan is to get everything running on my Gen 1 setup here, but in the meantime, I'm going to be on the lookout for a second generation head to put on this. They do bolt on to any generation block, but the valve cover is specific to the head. This little bolt right here is not present on the second generation head. It also has a little bit different design, but this is what's the most obvious from there. Getting back to the difference in how these motors are timed and the way that the ECU works is the first generation has a 7X crank. So we have seven teeth on the reluctor wheel and 6X on the cam which is picked up right uh, here, this little sensor right here on the front. This is actually for VVT. I'll come back to that in just a moment. On the 0607, they kept with the same setup, but again, the crank is different with the counterweight. And then when they moved to the E67 ECU for the 0809, it went to a very familiar pickup style of 58X, 4X. So that means 58X on the crankshaft and 4X on the cam. If you're familiar with LS motors, that's what the Gen 4 runs. So on the 240, we are running this exact pattern. More on that in a moment. Back to what I wanted to mention on, I lost my train of thought, take two. <laughs> so what I was gonna mention was, of course, VVT. So the reason this section of the valve cover is much larger and we have a sensor here is General Motors decided on this particular motor that they wanted to try to use variable valve timing on the exhaust cam only. So if you were to try to mix and match this, you would also have to make sure you have the correct piece on the front for the variable valve timing. This motor is also known as the LL8. If you're familiar with the LS series, there are a ton of LS1, LS2, LS3, LS4, no five, six, five minutes later, and a nine. Um, this one is the LL8, which again is a 4.2 dual overhead cam motor that made in our Gen 1 270 horsepower and 275 torque. Now I mentioned the head getting the update with the bigger cam, valves, etc. That did bump it up from 270 to 291 and 275 to 277. So just a slight uh, difference in torque, but a decent jump when it comes to the horsepower. Now, these things are a hoss. <laughs> it is a very large motor. It is all aluminum, so that does help, but fully dressed, I believe they are somewhere around 400 pounds. Additionally, like I mentioned before, they are very long and very tall. So that does kind of deter some folks away from building these. Starting to see a bit of people in the drift community try to take these on. Um, you know, a 2JZ or an RB is very expensive as well as the Barra motor. Those are probably the first three that come to mind when you think of a straight six. <laughs> and they are significantly more than what we have here. Now I've been told that either generation in a stock form can make 600 horsepower, no problem. Um, there are some examples of 800 horsepower being made with the stock setup, but you might be on borrowed time then. 
When it comes to aftermarket, there are um, more and more companies jumping on board each day, which is great to see. We have um, currently a company that does regrind cams, but I've also heard that maybe Comp is starting to make their way into that. Uh, Weissco just recently announced that it sounds like they're going to be setting up a, an off-the-shelf option piston, which is very cool. Molnar, who I've used their rods in the past, actually already create a set of rods for this. And then I think for the most part, folks are still just using the factory crankshaft and easily making over a thousand horsepower on this. Now, my Mustang, I don't plan to make a thousand horsepower. The transmission that we have is probably only good for about 500 or so. I really just want it to be a fun uh, stick shift car that we can just jump in and drive around and have some fun with it. But um, if I decide later on that I want to pursue this, you know, uh, platform a bit further, there are ways uh, of making lots of horsepower. I think that covers most of what I wanted to talk about. I do want to get back to one thing that we are going to do on the build is obviously swap this to a rear sump oil pan. So the Colorado, the five cylinder is a rear sump, which I actually have. It's actually sitting in the engine bay right now. We will be cutting that and extending it and then bolting it back on here for this motor. I think beyond that, that's really, that's really just a quick overview of the differences. Um, what we want to do is get this thing bolted that transmission and start getting rocking and rolling on our project. Uh, if you have any other questions, because that was pretty quick, I don't think I did and covered everything on this motor. I spent months researching this and I'm sure I'm forgetting lots of things, but if you have questions, comment down below and I will get you the answer to it. If you're curious about this motor, anything else I didn't cover, I'd love to uh, talk about it. I'm uh, super excited about this project and anytime someone starts to ask me about it, I'm like, oh, I gotta tell them everything I know about it. And I'm still learning a lot myself. So hopefully that gave you a little bit more insight on this motor of what we've, uh, you know, what I know about it and what I hope to achieve out of it. And uh, we'll catch you guys on the next one. Thanks for watching.